Hey guys, Steve here, SAMTB. Hey, I'm out here today on my uh, Ibis Ripmo AF, and um, I just got back from Canuga, my second trip out to Canuga uh, bike park that's out in Hendersonville, North Carolina, and it's just phenomenal. But uh, I was down sick for a little while, and so my last video was Canuga Bike Park. So um, I've been wanting to do a little bit of a kind of a follow up review and overview of this bike because evidently you guys like that. Um, you, you, uh, tons of people, I mean, Ibis, there's no way they can keep up. I think there's somewhere between a four and six month backlog on the Ibis Ripmo AF, the Ibis Ripmo V2 version two, and then the Mojo, the new Mojo is like six to eight to nine months out. So obviously you guys like Ibis and you like their bikes. And I love this bike. This is the Ibis Ripmo AF. I bought this back in uh, March. I got this in or the very beginning of April and it has the NX um, shift, which you can no longer get the NX SRAM NX version of this bike anymore. They, they just couldn't keep up with it. So they switched over to the Shimano Jewelry. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about that and I'll just kind of actually kick things off with that. Um, I love it. It's fine. Um, a lot of people I know upgraded to the GX. Um, and if you just got the money to burn and you want it, <clears throat> um, then great, go for it. Uh, get the GX, but you don't need it. Uh, the NX and the GX, the actual uh, chain ring, uh, your Eagle um, rear uh, disc is the same exact disc you get on the NX and the GX. It's the same. The only difference is the paddle shifter up here. Um, and then also your, obviously your derailleur shifter is different as well. It says GX on it. I don't know that it's much of a difference. I've ridden the both. I can't tell the difference. If you can and you want it, great, get it. But if you don't, trust me, if you find an NX maybe on Jensen USA or one of those you know secondary places and they still might have them, which I doubt they do, but uh, don't shy away from it. It's excellent shifting, no problem whatsoever. Um, after about uh, two months, I just brought it in did a little adjustment on the cable because the cable does stretch out a bit. You want to do that for sure two to three months after you've got it and let them shift that and that'll really tune it back in. And then uh, right before I went out to Canuga, brought it back in to the shop. And again, I had them just kind of do some little tweaking on it, but um, absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal system, system for shifting the Ceram NX. Now, I can't tell you anything about the Dior because I can't get a hold of it. Can't ride it, but I, I did meet a couple of guys at the bike park this weekend who both had the Dior and they both loved it as well. So I think it's just, you know, bike parts are getting just so good right now that it's hard to find like a bad one, especially when you start getting into the price range of these bikes right here, um, 3000 and up, you're probably going to get a pretty good bike, no matter what, a lot of it comes down to personal preferences. So, um, moving right on. The next thing was the, the shock. Uh, they changed the shock also. This is the DVO diamond D one diamond. Um, and now if you buy it, you get the DBO Onyx, um, which is supposedly like one notch up from this. I think it's like a $200 more for that fork than this fork. Um, I had to set up out of the door at Squatch Bike Shops out in Bavard, and I haven't really touched it. I tweaked it a little bit, you know, when I was, you know, I'm doing a little bit more jumping or less jumping, you know, uh, but really I kind of keep it right on and about, you know, right almost a little bit off the middle there to three. I'll show you my settings and stuff. Um, but this is a phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. Um, you can see, I mean, I was at the bike park and, uh, I'm not a huge jumper. I did push this back down, but, um, I've never completely, completely bottomed out this front fork. Um, excellent fork, phenomenal. Uh, number two is the Topaz, uh, the DBO Topaz. Now I'm going to, I want to just show you guys something here in a second, but, um, this is a phenomenal, phenomenal. And that, and that I have, uh, that takes a little bit more of a beating, obviously, than your front fork. You've got a sink, you've got two stanchions up front, and you've only got one, uh, you know, piston in the rear. Um, and the way they set this up, according to DVO, you should be at 30% sag. That's their optimal sag. Everyone wants to know somewhere between 25 and 35. DVO says 30. You can go to their website and have complete specs on how to do that. But um, the simplest way to do that is if you look on this bike, uh, there's a little logo. And if you get to the bottom of that logo or the back end of this little logo, when you sit on this bike with all your gear on it, you should just, just cover that little logo there. Just cover that. So I'm gonna bring in here and take a look. 
this little logo right here, just cover that logo. So the shock's gonna go down and cover it. So I sit on it, totally just messed up my little tripod standy thing here. Um, when I sit on it, because I don't have my pack on right now, you'll notice it's probably gonna be, you'll just see, stay, come on. I'm gonna sit on this, I don't have my backpack on. My backpack actually has a, a bit of weight in it. You'll see that it's just, just, you can just see a sliver of that. And when I have my pack on, it's like right there. So I'm right at 30% exactly. So that's totally tuned in. Uh, there's a little little um, membrane under here. Um, you can you fill it up on the other side here, right? There's a little valve. Uh, and then you can tune it in here. Just phenomenal, like excellent. Cannot tell you how much I enjoy this smooth ride. I've heard a lot about the coil. I've never ridden the coil. Can't tell you much about it, but I can tell you this. This thing is phenomenal. Such an awesome ride. You just feel so grounded on it. So, let me set this back up here. So next thing, just kind of like talk about in total, in, in a total package or group set, the SRAM NX is, is excellent. Um, the guide T brakes that came with that, I'm gonna leave that for last. There's one or two more things I wanna to touch on, then we'll get to the guide T brakes. But uh, NX is phenomenal. I've ridden the um, Shimano X XT and XTR group sets, and they're excellent as well. Um, but price points push them way, way, way over where this bike's at, at three grand. You're talking like 4,500, 5,000, 5,500, just for the XT and XTR group set. And um, this bike isn't really built for that, if you're asking me. Um, and I talked to some of the guys at Ibis, and they said the same thing. Basically, they don't offer the, those group sets on this bike because they are kind of tailoring this bike towards sort of, you don't call it budget market, because trust me, if you're dropping three grand for a bike, that's, that's not budget. But in this world of bikes, I guess it is. So um, that's what you're getting. So that's why that's not offered. Now you can always buy it at Jensen and they'll put it together for you anything you, any way you want. Or I'm sure there's other places out there that'll, that'll do that as well. But Jensen's just, I like them. They seem really good at what they do. And um, a bunch of guys I know use them and they've done that. They've said, hey, I want the frame, aluminum, and then, but I want this fork on it. I want this dropper on it. I want this wheel set on it. I want these tires on it. And they'll do that for you. They're excellent, phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. Anyway, so. Um, a couple of things, uh, tires that came on this are the Asa guys, uh, the Maxxis Asa guys. I have the X, the EXO plus. Yes, it's heavy. Get over it. Oh my God. I can't tell you how many people whining and crying and stuff. I'm like, what's wrong with you guys? Don't you understand what this tire is made for? It's made for going downhill fast and man, just nasty, rocky, muddy conditions. And, uh, and you don't need it everywhere, you know? Like if you like to ride on the roads and gravel, don't get this bike even, <laughs> don't get it. Um, you know, get the Ripley and get some, you know, aggressors or something on it. But um, you don't need these tires for that. But if you're here and you know, where it's always, it's muddy here, it's slippery, it's rocky, it's a lot of everything here. So I like this bike parks, phenomenal tire. Anyway, so get that out of the way, that's done. I got the Ibis 35, uh, the S35s, that's the aluminum 35 millimeter rims. Love them, can't complain about them. They've just been phenomenal. Not really anything to go wrong with them. They're perfect, they're, they're, they're tubeless ready. The bike comes tubeless actually. So um, you're good to go. Okay, so final, 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 um, the brakes. And I'm gonna kind of just zoom in on here for one second here. Hopefully this stays in focus and everything like that. But uh, we're looking, so the SRAM, SRAM brakes. Um, I came with the guide T brakes and uh, over and over I heard before I bought this bike guide T brakes they're okay I mean you know I wouldn't buy them but you know they're all right um, I haven't really had much of a problem the problem that I did have was the pads that came on this bike were just crap I don't know I'm sure they were the original like SRAM you know original material or whatever but um, they were just garbage. And in two months, I just kind of chewed through them. Now I will say this, I ride through a lot of water, a lot of silt, a lot of mud, a lot of crap. Got this bike in m the end of uh, March and April, beginning of April. And I've just put it, you know, through the ringer, like just rode it in everything. So probably just didn't do it any help. 
but um, I went through those pads and then I bought like, I, I just got a pair of cheap pads off of uh, Amazon. And those are crap too. They didn't even, they were just garbage. They were horrible garbage. So um, talked to a couple buddies and said, oh, get the sintered pads from SRAM. Um, it's kind of like a metal combo, you know, um, and uh, they are phenomenal. And they're great for what a lot of stuff that we have around here, which is, and what I ride through a lot, it's wet stuff. The problem is it sounds like a second grade cornet section in middle school or elementary school, uh, that is, would be following you around the trails anytime you even looked at your brakes. <laughs> they just squeak and squawk and scream like crazy. So they're really freaking loud brake pads, but they stop you without question, like, like a monster. They just bite into that route or the rotor and you are going to stop. There's no question about it. But the noise is really like after a while, you kind of get over it, but, but sometimes it's just unnerving. Like it's not even wet, it's nothing. It's just, just the minute it gets a little bit warm, it just starts screaming and screeching. So I posted something online, a little bit comment about that. And uh, these guys, uh, MTX Braking, reached out and said, hey, here's a voucher, try our pads out. Tried them out. Now, full disclosure, I did not change my rotors, which I've been told I should have changed my rotors when I changed my pads. I didn't know that. I don't even know if that's a thing for real for sure, but that's what I was told. So I'm just telling you the whole story so you understand what I'm about to say here. When I first rode them for the first week or two, silent as a dead man. No noise, zippo, not even a, not even a, just nothing, absolutely quiet. Took them out to the bike park, and we got a little wet, a little rowdy, a little hot, and I uh, noticed a little, little squeaking here and there. But, but trust me, it was nothing compared to what the center pads from SRAM were doing. So, um, MTX pads got the big thumbs up. They're supposedly a ceramic blend of some type and they are excellent like pads and they also stop you like a beast. They just, they're great. They bite into that rotor, stop you dead when you want. Great confidence in them. I really enjoy them. They're a couple bucks more, but if you do go on their website, I'm guessing that they have some kind of promo code somewhere. I'll try and find one for you when I post this and maybe get a couple bucks off of them because they're a little bit more expensive than the SRAM original sintered pads. Now, if you don't mind the noise, maybe try out the sintered pads from SRAM. But uh, whatever you do, don't buy that crap on Amazon. Those are just garbage. So there you go. Um, what else? The KS dropper post on this bike, not a problem. Never have had a problem. It's absolutely perfect. Works absolutely perfect and flawless. Um, I think I've got the 180, would have liked maybe the 200. Um, I'd love to have dropped that down just that little bit more and then just been able to like drop it because I'm still really a bit freaked out on some jumps and stuff. So if I could just get that seat completely out of the way and get my buttocks wherever I want to move it, um, I might be a little happier with that. But besides that, it's phenomenal. Really nothing else to cover on this bike. Um, handlebars are from Ibis, posters from Ibis, it's got Crane, Cane Creek, um, like a collar. I don't know. It seems great. I don't know. I've been told I'm going to have to change it out in about a year or two. I don't know. I've only had the bike for six months-ish, seven, eight months now. So love it. Um, pedals, I got Chester's, the, uh, the race face Chester's on here. Um, they're perfectly awesome. They do their job. They, they just love my shins. What can I say? They're awesome. And that's about it. Um, cannot speak highly enough. If you can get your hands on this bike, get it. If you're looking for it, there's absolutely nothing, nothing that comes close to this bike. And I'm talking nothing for three grand. There's nothing that comes close. There's some bikes out there you can find for less, but they're not even half this bike. Not even close. My personal opinion, but I think it's pretty good actually, because I've ridden a bunch of bikes. I've ridden a bunch of bikes before this one, and I'm still trying to ride even more, trying to get some more reviews out for you guys, which is really, really hard right now because nobody has bikes. Um, but I will be taking another ride out to Brevard, and hopefully, 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 uh, Squatch will have some bikes available. I really want to get on the Mondrake or Foxy RR um, or one of those. And they've got a new electric out, which uh, I'd love to try out. Uh, and then Orbea has a new electric, weighs about 35 pounds, um, an e-bike. I'd love to try that one out too. And uh, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. That's enough of me babbling on here. Um, that's it for Jack and I for today, my Ibis Ripmo. AF and I are having a blast out here. I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks so much for watching. 
Hey guys, one last thing I wanted to mention, almost forgot. Um, the bottom down tube here on the Ibis Ripmo AF, Ibis doesn't sell a uh, protector like they have on the, uh, on the carbon version. And I don't know why they, <laughs> they should do that. You should do that, Ibis. But it's kind of weird, but Kona, um, they do. So uh, you can get this online. I'll leave the link to this. Uh, it's really nice. It's heavy duty plastic, like rubber plastic right on here. And you can kind of see it. It looks really good. It does have a K there, but whatever. Um, but it's really going to protect this, this tube right here from getting smashed uh, from rocks and stuff right there. So <clears throat> I'm really happy I found this. It's a great job. I also have that uh, 3M. Uh, you can kind of see it now because of the light. There's a 3M uh, wrap I put on here. Um, it's, it's pretty heavy. It's probably like three to four times heavier than anything else you're going to find um, with that kind of bike wrap stuff. Uh, and it really helps protect the bike in areas that you're afraid it's actually going to take a hit, you know, and really get some good, like, potential damage to the to the paint. Ibis also sells a paint, which ironically is called orange, even though they call this, like, something red. Um, get the uh, Ripmo AF Orange, and if you do get any little dinks and chips, clean it off really good, dry it off really good, dab this on. It's got, almost got, like, a like a nail polish kind of a brush in here or like for models and stuff and then just dab it don't wipe it just dab it kind of pulls up and fills up that crack looks like new you never even know it was there so anyway thanks so much for stopping in today again ribus ribbon af love this bike can't say enough about it phenomenal go get yourself one